and I love stocks. Please make an attempt to hit that like button if you like this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. But we're going to go over five tickers this week and we'll try and run through them fast. Uh, D-I-S-C-A, C-L-D-X, Boeing, V, and Walmart. So we'll start off with the top of the list. I'm going to pull up my, my favorite moving average chart right now. I'm looking in the green after hours. We're at 41.23, and that's where we closed at. So let me go ahead and take off this news. This is the one that got involved in that big old sell-off or whatever happened with that, that uh, hedge fund trader. And this one took a big knife. So I like watching these knives, especially something like this that's unexpected and a ir little irrational. And we might be able to find us a little bounce play on this. And we're going to go ahead first. We're going to pull up the year's chart. So I'm going to take off the news, take off the tape. This is my moving averages of my 50 and my 200 SMA. And we're going to pull up the yearly chart. We're going to clean this thing all. Let's go back three years. This has had a wonderful run. You can't can't deny that on the three-year chart it definitely almost pulled back to strong support level right down here at 33.47 I think we got it right around 35 maybe a little under 35 on this one here so that's good enough that's good enough but she's had a real nice run and this is kind of you know this is irrational definitely I mean just run up just like that and then you had them three big white soldiers and usually when I see them it's time for a sell-off, and that's probably what triggered this guy when he saw this chart. He said, this is way overextended. So we're going to draw a trend line here at, at yesterday's close, which was 41.93. Then I want to draw another trend line right down here. I think that, yeah, it's kind of hard. We're going to make this a channel of low support. So that's going to be our low support. We got third for a strong buy down here at 33.47. Then we got that 37.54 and that 41.93 for support levels. And then resistance levels to break. We're going to be looking up here right around the $47 mark. So the way I'm going to kind of look at this, we do have a little golden cross right here, but man, it did it didn't help this matter out. So if this thing pulls back to a double bottom, maybe here at 35, let's see what we got on the 20-day chart, one hour. We got it right at 3460 and I had a 3347. So I'm thinking support level needs to hold. It's going to be right down here at 3939. And then we got 3754. And then we have the double bottom at 3460 with a strong buy at 3347. With resistance to break, going to be here at 45 bucks. Run it on up here to right around 4791. And then if we're lucky, yeah, you know, maybe. But I think this is going to consolidate. We're going to watch this for a week. I'm going to keep it on the watch list. And I'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow. I'm not wanting to jump into trade. But if we do have us a little knife, I might want to go ahead and take me a little scalp trade on it if the options are up. I mean, if there's a good volume on the options. So let me pull up. Let's just see what they got on here. C C I S C A. What was that again? C I S C A. Hmm. No options. Oh, duh. D I S. What a day today, man. It was really boring. If you did not notice, there, there, nothing would hold today. That was kind of ugly. I didn't like that too much. So we're going to go in the April 16th. I think these $45 strikes are going to be pretty nice right in here. Those are the ones I'd be looking at maybe. Or even take these up here right around the uh, $40 strike. So those are the two I'm going to be looking at when I want to take this trade tomorrow. Unless I want to get into the put side, which I'll probably go ahead and stick with the calls. So we've got the 45 and the 40 strike. And that's going to be D-I-S-C. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be CID, CLDX. This one here had a nice little run today. We're going to keep this on watch and watch it this week. CLDX. 
she had a real nasty pullback and then she had a nice little run right back up here after hours so what was in the news on this stock here um, fourth quarter loss narrows him and revenue jump so that's that's good news that's good news so I can't complain about the revenue the company ongoing up with clinical trial patients with factory code contract after the company reported interim data from the company's on so I'd probably have to read that information to call it the pullback but we're going to go ahead and call a support level down here this is a real nice little inverse head and shoulders and your neckline is going to be right around in here I think right around that 1770 area if that holds that'll be great with a strong buy here at 16 35 and then resistance to break on this one right here is going to be right here past 2163 if we can get past that we'll get up here to the gap and that's going to be we'll just go ahead and call it right in here even at 23 dollars cldx so i think we're going to watch this tomorrow if i can get a pull back here right around the 1770 area i might take the trade so we'll be watching it tomorrow and see how she runs and i'll report tomorrow after hours the next one's Boeing. Now I'm going to give you a little hint on Boeing. Boeing got some big contracts today. This was an overnight swing for me on my big account. And I got out of it, read it open. And I think it's on the leg to move up higher. But, I mean, it just got a, one of the biggest orders it's ever got, 10737s from Southwest Airlines. And then they got nine more reserve something or other today, too. So we're going to probably get some good news on this every once in a while. And I'm going to go ahead and clean this chart up a little bit, clear it up, and we'll start fresh. This is going to be Boeing, so we can read it. Look at, We just really need the 20-day, but I'm going to pull up the yearly because I want to get this support level that we had with the previous high right here was a support level. And we did pull back to that today or um, three days ago, and then we had that big engulfing candle. So the resistance we've got to break is going to be right up in here. If you look at the yearly chart, right around 254.14. And then that can carry on up to right around the 262, right in here, 263.30. And then you got your 269 and a double top here at 273.70. With a solid hold, I think this support should hold here at 238.74 if we do get a pullback on it. Now, it does like to bounce off this 200 or off this 50 SMA, so you can keep that in mind too on the yearly. We're going to look at the 20-day now and see if I missed anything on the 20-day, which I usually do. Got a pivot point in this channel right here, starting a little Darvis box with higher lows, so I'm liking that. I think we can squeeze on past this 200. This is the 200 SMA, and that hits that resistance right there at 254.14. So we've got a little three support levels here, and I'm going to draw one in right here, and another one right in, right down here for sure, for the double bottom. I really like this one here for a double bottom. If it does pull back to this area, I'd really consider about loading up and taking it on the way up at 233.62. That's going to be your strong buy. Then we got 238.74, and then that first support, or actually. We'll, we'll just bring this out. I'm going to go ahead and put that here. You got your first support at 247.45, 242.66. Then you got that 238.74 with a um, strong buy right down here, right at that 233.62. With the resistance to break, it's going to be that 200 SMA, and that'll take you past 254.14. I noticed one thing about this trade today. And I've noticed it here in the past couple weeks that the bears are trying to take control of the trade. And you've got a lot of people out there that are going to try to short this stock. And I think it, it's, it's relative priced in right now here at 250 And anything above it is a gift. So, I mean, if we get up here to a double top at 273.70, I'd consider taking some big profit on this thing. But I got out of it first thing this morning, then I scalped it again today and got out of it at the double top. And I'll show you where my exit was. This is on the daily one minute. Got out, 
right up in here. When this thing reached up and hit this double top right in here, I went ahead and exited the trade, and then she pulled back, hit that 200, and that's the 200 SMA. I really love these two moving averages when it comes to slow, slow kind of pace trading, and they're pretty solid when it comes to supports and resistance levels, and I trade off them pretty well. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Boeing. So let's keep this in mind. I think I'm still bullish on Boeing. I said, let's look at Boeing. I'm bullish on this stock, but you got to understand, you might think that you're getting ready for a great run on it, and all of a sudden you're going to have a bear attack. So anytime you're up good on this trade, take your profit and get an opportunity to buy in on the dip because it is a big mover and the money moves with it. And you could be up like four or 500 bucks, 300 bucks, and all of a sudden, in about five minutes, you're down 200 on it. So the next one we're gonna talk about is gonna be V, Visa. We're bullish on Visa. Vegas is bullish on Visa. She's bullish on Boeing. And she's bullish on Walmart. That'll be the last one we talk about today. I had a low support on Visa down here at 208.33. I charted over the weekend. We didn't even come close to seeing it. So we're going to look at the 20-day and see if I can find any kind of support levels. Got one right here. Got one right here. And then I got another one right down here. Whoop, that's wrong. I got to take that off. Right there. So we've got a resistance to break right up in here. And then we start getting up into this channel up in here in this resistance channel. And that's going to be long right there, right around the 217. Now, I'm bullish in this as the economy will start to recover, but pay attention. Uh, COVID cases are increasing, and we have that open, open border issue that's bringing, the, bringing that crisis up to us, too. So we've got a lot of things going on, a lot of changes, a lot of over-regulations. But I think with the new stimulus package that's been handed out, people are going to want to spend that money and... I'm going to be looking at Visa to break this 217.12. If we can bust past that 217.12, we'll get up here to right around the 218 area. That's where that split of that candle is to a resistance no higher than probably 220. So we have three solid supports, and that's going to be your 213.52, 211.91, and 210 with a strong buy here at 208.33. And then resistance to break is going to be this 200 up here. We've got to get past 215.14, 217.12, 218.13, and then uh, solid resistance up here at 220. And that's Visa. And then the last one we're going to talk about is going to be one of my favorite tickers. Called this one out last week. I'm up about 100% on it, and that's Walmart. We've had a nice three day run. Miss Vegas says this is in the dark pool, so she's pretty confident that it's going to go up higher. Uh, Jagerian Brothers talked about it, unusual options calls last week, and also Jim Kramer was vouching for it too. So we're going to pull up the yearly chart on Walmart. We're, you know, this to me is a stock that has not had its run like it should have. And we're way, we're way oversold. So what we got to do, we got to get this thing up here to right around the 200. And that's going to be right here, right around the 138.13 area. And that's on the yearly, and that's where we need to take it. And then we got to try to get to the gap trade. And that's going to be, I, I ought to clean this up, but I've got my, yeah, let's clean it up. It's pretty dirty right now. Okay, so we got a support level right here. And we got that 200 right here. And I want to draw that line right in here on the 200 and kind of run it with some kind of candlestick pattern over here. And I'm thinking right there at 137.34. That's the resistance that we got to break. And then we got another one right up in here. I'm looking at this body of this candle right here. Now I spot these real fast because I've done these, I've done over a million charts. And I can just see, I've done it over and over and over, you know. I can see exactly where I think I need this trade to go. And then we got that gap fill right here. You see that? We want to draw that, that candle in right there. And then we're going to put one right in here. And then that bottom support level. And we got that trend. I'm going to draw that trend line up. And I think that's what we need to hold. 
and we're going to put that right there and take that to the right so that's way under my support level but it does hit this little area right in here so whoops that's not what I want a lot of uh, your indicators are run on algorithms and my algorithm is what I've learned in the past a previous chart and so it's it's built in into my own computer system in my own head so that's about the way that cookie crumbles well, we got to break this resistance level right here on the year so we're going to go ahead and draw that into a red line I really like that I think that's a pretty solid solid resistance if we can bust past this 137.34 we'll take it up here to the gaps and try to clear out this channel in here and those resistance levels is 138.40, 139.18 and 139.97. I'll magnify this up a little bit so you can pause it at any time and write these numbers down but we've got like I said we got to break this red line resistance at 137.34, 138.40, 139.18 and 139.97 with a solid support right down here at this 134.80 area. I like to see that hold. If not, we'll take it down to 133 and then your strong buy at 131.58. Remember that first support is right here at 135. So you can jot this down or you can go ahead and copy and paste this and kind of look for your own personal reference as a tool that might help you get in or out of the trade. And this is Walmart, and this is it for the market report. I'll go over these same tickers tomorrow and see what we got going on. I'll weed out the bad ones and add a new one if, it, if that's the case. But these are the five we're going to go with, and it's going to be D-I-S-C-A, C-L-D-X, Boeing, Visa, and Walmart. And always remember, Miss Vegas is posting alerts in here. You can hit this icon, and it'll take you straight to our Twitter account. And she's posting great alerts in here. Also on our website, we have our links. If you're not a member to our room, to our stock twit links. And always remember, subscribe, ring that bell. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And let's tear it up tomorrow. Let's have a better day. The sell imbalance at close was $2 billion, So we still might have a stagnant week. I think, you know, but I'm going to be playing the dip. When the market's red, I try to be green. But always remember, I love stocks.